Okay? Now, let's go to Revelation. What, we, what I wanted to bring back up to you, and this is very important because God had revealed something else to me on this, and I wanted to share this with you back in Revelation chapter 13. All right, now keep in mind, friends, if it wasn't for the Essene Humane Gospel that we have, we would have no idea, none, no clue whatsoever, that the Pope of Rome is this man that blasphemes God. This is why so many people believe it was, an, was, was a Muslim, Antichrist, someone that would be against the Christian way, okay? And let's go, let's go to verse, um, verse uh, I'll start with verse 6 in chapter th 13. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. This is why people thought it was a Muslim, because they were against the temple of, of Israel, the Jewish temple. But this temple is the temple of God, and I, I believe it's more the temple in heaven because it says right there, He opened His mouth, blasphemed against God to blaspheme His name and His tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And clearly, everybody was thinking, well, this, it can't be the Pope. How could anybody think this is the Pope when Pope stands for Yeshua? He stands for Jesus. Although he may have a corrupted way of doing it, he stands for Him. All right? And then, though, I shared with you guys the incredible writing here that Yeshua, when Yeshua is quoting the same thing, John took his words from Yeshua, if you really want to know where he got it from. You guys don't like me yelling. You're probably going to enjoy this video here. I haven't yelled yet, have I? So anyway, praise the Lord. All right, verse 7, it says, But the eternal spirit of all shall send forth his holy messengers, and they shall restore the holy law anew. That's your two witnesses which wicked men have hidden by their vain traditions, and those that believe not the holy law shall perish. And in that day shall all they that keepeth my law and commandments be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Did you notice that? It's not just the Jews that are hated for his name's sake. It's all that keep the holy law. You know, I found out in the humane gospel, Yeshua clearly says all those that keep the gospel that he brought are the true Israel. A lot of you guys ought to rejoice over that because I've had many people write me, the true Jews are those that keep his words. Now we know that Israel is blind right now and he is going to open their eyes. That prophecy is in here as well. He's going to open their eyes. That time is soon coming. Let's read on though. So he says here, they'll be hated of all na nations for my name's sake. For many shall be offended at my holy laws and betray one another and shall hate one another. For many false prophets shall indeed arise and shall deceive many. He says, yea, I tell you, or excuse me, yea, I tell you, in that age yet to come, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. Did you notice that? Isn't that what he got, has right here in Revelation? See? Same thing. Verse 6. Out of his mouth to blaspheme against God, to blaspheme his name. That's what Yeshua just said. And his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Yeshua said he blasphemed it so many times as the, as the count of the stars of heaven. Those that live in heaven, by the way, the sons of God are the stars mentioned. See? In the Bible, that's what it's speaking of right there. So Yeshua is clearly identifying this man the same way, but he says it'll happen in that age to come, which is the age we're living in now. But how does he identify him? This is what we want to be able to see here. Let's go back to the humane gospel and look at it. See, because he shows you how. He says, for hands dripping with the innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain. Yeshua said they're going to take up his name in vain. In other words, they're going to take up the name of, whether it be Yeshua, Jesus, Yahshua, however you want to say, they say it, Jesu, Yeshua, uh, uh, um, all the different ways in different languages. He says, for hands dripping with innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain. Do you know that they say in secret societies they still offer sacrifices? It's been said that Pope Francis has been involved in such rituals because of being a Jesuit. I can't say yay or nay on that. I don't want to put that to his blame because I do not know. But Yeshua says 
that they'll be, their hands will be dripping with the innocent blood of my creatures and will take up my name in vain and mislead many and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees and not the true path of the pure oblation. That kind of tells me they're going to help make sure that the Jews get a temple rebuilt. And the Jews are already planning on doing sacrificial offerings again against Isaiah's prophecy, chapter 66, where he says, if you kill an ox, as if you kill a man, if you kill a, 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 a goat, it's as if you broke a dog's neck. The most important one of those is if you killed a man, murder. Isaiah showed you, thou shalt not kill. If you kill the ox, you're breaking, thou shalt not kill. How can we miss this, friends? So the ones that are going to blaspheme his name like in no other time are going to be the ones that are declaring the name of Jesus. Now, back to Revelation. So now we know who he is. All right? Notice verse 7, And it was given to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. That's the part God revealed to me after I got off with you last night. It's given unto him to make war with the saints. Right now, Pope Francis has been calling, since the Charlie Hebdo incident, he has been calling for laws to be put in force that will put you in jail if you say anything against the Catholic Church or any of the religions that agree with the Vatican. They don't state it that way, but that's exactly what it is. And he stated these type of uh, comments. He, he actually was supportive of the Muslims that killed those people at Charlie Hebdo's newspaper place in France. He said people shouldn't have spoken anything against him. He said it's wrong for people to do that. In other words, freedom of speech is wrong. So he's given, see, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. See? And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. So not only are the laws going to be passed to be able to suppress another inquisition, by the way, this new world order is setting up giving the Catholic Church full sovereignty, sovereignty over all the world, over every kindred, over every tongue, over every nation, and he, was, and he was going to enact laws for anyone that persecutes or says anything against the Catholic Church or any of the denominations that are joined up with it. Friends, we're, this is a serious hour. And you're about to see prophecy fulfilled. Now, let me say this. September is a huge month. I'm not saying that that power will be granted to him in September but I believe they're setting up the framework for it. Now, another interesting thing, and I want to share this with you in closing, something my wife brought up to me just last night. She asked me, we, got, we went back to chapter 12 of Revelation about the woman, which we know this woman speaks of the mother of Yeshua, Mary. She is, a, you know, she's going to bring forth a child who was to rule the nation with a rod of iron. And the, 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 the dragon with the seven heads, ten horns, which, by the way, when he's cast out to earth, it just shows that that devil, that evil spirit, goes into the Pope and, and those different uh, nations, those ten regions of the world, their leaders, they all become demonically influenced, and all the demons that are with Satan that are cast out with him out of heaven as well are sent to the earth. And God says, woe for the inhabitants of the earth. Okay? So, but we see in Revelation 12 that he's been after this woman, but once he comes down to the earth, then he's going to go after the remnant of her seed. We are that remnant of her seed. Now, historically, the Jews during Yeshua's time, James the Just and his brethren, them, they ran to the place in Jordan called Petra. There's a lot of people because of this scripture here believe that people all run to Petra. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but you will go to the wilderness, no doubt, to escape this new world order. It may be the only place you can go because he's already going to be given uh, a law to be able to, uh, uh, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. It doesn't say he prevails over all of them. 
but he's given that power to do it. Not to mention over the entire world of every kindred tongue and nation. All right. In chapter 12, though, let's start with verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, and it deceived the whole world. And he was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now has come the salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they came... Excuse me, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their own lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and you that dwell in, in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. See? Now, I do believe that that represents Israel in, in, one, in one regard there. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into, a pla into her place where she has nourished for a time's time and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth uh, water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. See, that does, that's not just the Jews. That's also, that is the be, true believers that are standing for the humane way of Yeshua as the gospel is being restored to what? As the gospel was being restored by the two witnesses. And by the way, uh, it's also written here we know that the, that the dragon has 42 months. That's three and a half years. This woman has 1,203 score days, 1,260 days. The two witnesses preach for 1,203 score days, 1,260 days. Again, three and a half years. Everything happens in a three and a half year period. So friends, the thing is, and by the way, the dragon was wroth with a woman who went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. Do you know what commandments those are? Not the 613. The easiest way to know it is because the one that comes to restore it is Elijah and Moses. Now, some believe it's Enoch. I believe it's Elijah and Moses. It doesn't matter, matter, matter either way, whichever way you want to hold that, it's okay. Either way, either way is okay. It doesn't matter to me which way God does it either. I'm okay with either way. I, I, I just want to, I want to be as close to Yeshua as I possibly can be. Now, the way you know what the commandments are, we, everybody agrees that Elijah is one of them. And what did God say when he speaks about the coming of Elijah in this day before the great and dreadful day of the Lord? That's in Malachi. Let's look at that real quick so I don't get it wrong for you. For behold, the day cometh shall burn as an oven, and the, and the proud and yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble in the day that... Come and shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Then he says something peculiar. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments? Look it up in your Bible. Do a Bible search. Put Horeb and commandments. You will find it in the book of Deuteronomy, and you will find that there God gave the Ten Commandments and two statutes to Israel. And the Bible clearly said, and he added no more. So when it says they keep the commandments of God, well, Elijah is coming back bringing those very commandments that were along with Moses because he says, Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That couldn't have been John. John didn't come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And, but Yeshua does apply the first part of verse 6 to John. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. But the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse, was never done. These are some things to think about, friends. I trust it's a blessing to you. Keep in mind whoever they give that authority to be over the New World Order. 
He's going to be the man of the one world government, one world banking system, the monetary, the one world religion. He pro proclaims the name of Jesus, but he blasphemes God's name. God, God, God's name like no other generation has ever done it. Not just him, but those that stand with him as well the same way. I'm Stephen Benu, with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Shalom and good evening.